Hi, my name is Kareem Jones, and you're watching Peppy Love You. And this is another segment in my videos regarding the In Vogue reunion or a possibility of an In Vogue reunion. This is a fan perspective of what is probably going on in the In Vogue camp, right? I don't know if it's true or not, but I'm telling you, I'm thinking that these things, I, I don't think I'm too far off from any of the things that I've said. So we've talked about the Born to Sing record and how wonderful uh, In Vogue is and how In Vogue has captured our hearts, our minds, and how we love them so much so. These ladies are almost in their, almost at the 60 age <laughs> and we still love them, right? And we're still craving for that a possibility of a reunion. We've talked about the Funky Divas record, right? And how Maxine and Dawn are at the forefront of the Funky Divas record. And we've talked about Terry, and unfortunately, I don't have Terry's cover. But we've talked about Terry releasing a uh, Southern Gale in 1995, and that we, and that I rather think that. Sylvia pretty much nixed <laughs> the uh, Doors record probably because Terry Ellis's record did not do well financially for everybody involved. And so it only made sense. Hey, ladies, we're not going to rock the boat. I'm not going to release work on Doors record. I'm just going to sit back and let's make this in vogue thing happen one more time. Which brings us to now the ladies of in vogue have released EV3 in 1997, right? And I remember this record, of course. And this is what I love about <laughs> a quote that was in the record. And I just, I, I think it sums the ladies up uh, very well. It says, a musical dynasty has just become a magical trinity. Terry Ellis, Maxine Jones, and Cindy Heron Braggs have transformed in vogue once again. After selling millions of albums worldwide, garnering critical acclaim for reinventing themselves at every turn, EV3 is the fierce chapter yet in the legendary in vogue story. EV3. This one is dedicated to their fans. Right? Can, will the ladies, will the ladies reinvent themselves? Will they reinvent themselves again? Can this group reinvent itself one more time? Is it possible that Terry Ellis, Cindy Heron Braggs, Dawn Robinson, Maxine Jones, and we will be discussing Rona Bennett as well, is it possible for these ladies to put their differences aside if they really have differences? Can they put them to side? Uh, can they put them to the side and give us something we can feel? Well, let's talk. So now that the ladies are going through some changes within the group, we know something has happened. This is what I'm thinking. Okay, I'm thinking that maybe Sylvia didn't say this right out. Maybe Sylvia didn't say this to Terry. Your record didn't do well. I'm shelving, uh, I'm shelving any future plans with you as well. Maybe she didn't say that. Maybe she said that to uh, Terry and Terry just not saying it was said, right? Now, Dawn has said that Sylvia, I think that she said they were in Terry, Terry's um, hotel room and that they were all there in the hotel room, talking about the record, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. Now, if Dawn is working on her record, it makes sense to me that Sylvia, and I'm not saying she's doing this, but I'm thinking that Sylvia being the woman who she is, I'm thinking maybe it's possible Sylvia is doing the divide and conquer. Maybe she's doing that. We do know that, what was it, 1996. Now, if, if Terry released Southern Gale in 1995, in 1996, the ladies of In Vogue record Don't Let Go Love for the Set It Off soundtrack, 
right? Bringing them back into the forefront. Did it go to number one on the R&B charts and number two on the pop charts? I believe it did. Anyway, what we do know is, is that it brought the ladies back into the forefront. And here's what we also do know. We do know that there were still rumors about them breaking up. Still. Even in the midst of Don't Let Go Love. So from 1994... Or 1993, when they was on the American Music Awards with Terry and Dawn receiving the American Music Award all the way up to that point. So for about, what, four years, they were, have, they were always plagued with a breakup rumor, whether if it was on the low or whether if it was in the medium. They come out, and I'm thinking, as I said before, I'm thinking that it was more of a move by uh, Sylvia Ron to pretty much just say, hey, it makes sense to put these ladies back together again and not work on Dawn's record. Dawn has never said that. Terry has never said it. Maxine has never said it. Cindy has never said it. But I'm going to speculate that that's what was taking place because it's the only thing that makes sense. I think that when... Dawn was asked about having another motive. It could have been, the other motive would have been, I'm going to focus on my record. That's it. That's the only thing that I can think of. But now we do know that Dawn has said she's always been vocal about money. So if Dawn has always been vocal about money and getting a bigger piece of the pie or getting whatever it is that they're owed, so on and so forth, then that could also have been an issue in the group as well. So maybe the ladies and maybe everybody involved is probably looking at Dawn Robinson like she's a Bobby Brown. And hey, it might be better if we get rid of Bobby. <laughs> right? It could have been. These are just alleged things. I'm just throwing out possibilities. Right? Uh, from a fan perspective... But what we do know is, is that they had success with Don't Let Go Love in 1996 and they're gearing up to release what would be the EV3 record. Now, here is why I broke this up into the parts that I did in order to make help it make sense. Let's go back to Tommy and Denny. Tommy and Denny, I do recall them saying about the Funky Divas record. And I've said this before, that Sylvia did not like the record, whatever that meant. Maybe she didn't like all of the songs on the record. Maybe she just didn't like the way it sounded, you know, like whatever sound that they was trying to put together. Whatever the case may be, Sylvia didn't like it. Tommy and Denny has been quoted as saying she did not like the record. Dawn has been quoted as saying she did not like the record. Foster McElroy also, I think it was like a 25-year anniversary of the Funky Divas record and some article that they were in. And they literally went down, Tom and Denny, and the interviewer uh, talked to them about how they came up with each song, so on and so forth. So go and check that uh, article out. I can't recall what, it, uh, what article it was in. And so I do believe within that article, they did say that they just... Said to Sylvia, like, well, and to the ladies, well, the record is done. If she don't want it, oh, well, you're just going to hold on to it. And then eventually Sylvia comes to them and says, hey, I really need the record. I need the record. And they were like, well, the record is finished. Here you go. So she takes the record and for whatever reason, she's able to uh, make it work. And she does. So why do I bring that up? Because if the ladies, if Tommy and Denny, for whatever reason, can have whatever they have, um, what, what, what am I looking for here? That they can really stand up to Sylvia on any level and everything is cool. I think that the ladies should have not tried to leave Too Tough Enough Productions so soon. Maybe they should have tried to at least renegotiate whatever production deal that they had with Tommy and Denny. It kind of makes sense because it seemed like to me Tommy and Denny, even though even though they probably have their hands in a lot of things with them financially with their production deal or they're not getting a, a bigger piece of the pie, so on and so forth. 
for them to sign directly to Electra Records, even if they did get more money, now they are in the hands of Celia. Okay? And so it sounds like to me that if that is the case, then Tommy and Denny can't probably go and say, hey, I'm holding on to the record. You know, don't do this, don't do that. It's like the ladies are at Celia's mercy now. Okay? So we have the record is about to come out. They're having this meeting with all of the ladies because Sylvia. To me, it kind of makes sense from Sylvia's standpoint. I don't know why Dawn didn't want to see it this way. And I think she was just probably trying to hold to her guns. And who can blame her? If that's what you want to do, by all means, Dawn, go ahead on and do it. But it only makes sense to me that, hey, okay, well, I still work on my record, right? Can I still work on my record? Even though you're giving me... Uh, you want me to sign on for this two-year deal? And I think the two-year commitment, pretty much. Well, it could have been a deal where you don't do any outside things. Now, if that's possible, I can see why Dawn would say no. That means I can't work on my record at all for two years. That could be possible. However, Dawn says no. I'm not doing it. I'm holding on. To, I'm sticking to my guns. No, 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 no. And... Dawn eventually leaves the group. And in Vogue is no longer for women. And we, them, are trying to get adjusted to seeing Terry, Cindy, and Maxine as a trio. Now, let's talk about this particular dynamic of Involve, the trio. I recall when I realized that Dawn was not going to be in the group anymore because, you know, when the single came out, just like everybody else, I was surprised that she wasn't there. To me, it was pretty much a visual thing. Now, this is where things are about to probably get a little bit more controversial. And maybe some of the ladies are not going to like what I have, to, um, what I'm about to say. But it's it's not a diss. It's just the way it comes off to me as a fan. As I said, all the ladies bring their individual talents to the group. I don't think we miss Dawn vocally. Now, the ladies of Invo, because of how Tommy and Denny structured them vocally, as far as how they uh, structured the songs for four part harmonies. Maybe they struggled in that way. But for me, I, I, I don't know about you all. I don't see Invoke missing a beat vocally. They didn't. I think it was more of a visual thing. Dawn isn't there. We used to seeing four members. I think for us, that was the initial shock. Now let's talk about another shock. When they re had released whatever, I didn't like the single. I liked it enough because it was in vogue. I liked it enough that it was a great song, but it just, I went out and purchased the record just because it was in vogue, right? I'm a fan. You know, it's like all the ladies are back. I'm going out and getting a record. I didn't think anything else about in vogue after that when, when I, uh, because I went out and got the record. Unlike, let's say, Born to Sing, I think I was pretty much, no, I went. I didn't purchase any singles from Born to Sing. I went out and purchased the actual CD after we bootlegged the copy. But with the Funky Divas record, I actually uh, purchased a, a couple of singles before I purchased the Funky Divas record. And with the EV3 record, it came out. I purchased it when they released Too Gone Too Long. I wasn't even thinking about them as far as. You know, what were they were doing on the charts, how well the song was doing. If I saw the video, I was like, okay. If I saw whatever, I was like, okay. For songs like, for, for the videos of Born to Sing and for the videos for My Love You're Never Gonna Get It, I was like, oh, I'm glued in. I got to, I got to see the videos. I wasn't like that with EV3 at all. So I think it was more of an aesthetics. Now, I do recall that Sylvia probably had a tour planned for the ladies with the EV3 record. I do remember reading in some um, articles that 
the EV3 tour was canceled because of low ticket sales. And granted, if it's low ticket sales because of, you know, uh, not being, you know, used to seeing the ladies as three, then it is what it is. I don't recall them racking up a lot of awards with the EV3 record like they did with the uh, Born to Sing and the Fuck Your Divas record. And as I said, it was the fact that we didn't see them as a four unit. Now, I'm going into talking about in both sound. Going back to Maxine, I'm a part of a Facebook group called the In Vogue Craze. And I think I was making a couple of comments or somebody was talking about productions of, of, of how uh, they produced the ladies. Somebody, I can't remember who the person was, was pretty much, you know, talking about this is this person's voice because this person sings on top of that person's vocals and so on and so forth. And then they made mention that Maxine, and of course she said, sings all the low stuff. And I remember in that comment, I said, that's it. That's the in vogue sound. The in vogue sound is Maxine. Sorry, I know some of you guys are probably not going to like it, but the in vogue sound is Maxine. And on that note, I'm going to stop because I could be over my 30 minutes because I haven't been keeping track of the time. And so we're going to stop right here. I think that's a good place to stop to talk about, to pick up on why I feel like it's Maxine that they need back into this group, regardless if all of the ladies get back together or not. You're watching Pepe LaVille. Be right back.